What about your evening rituals? Do you have a evening ritual as a way to off ramp yourself for a beautiful eight hour sleep or however many hours sleep that you yeah. have? I've got a set schedule, 9.30 uh, p.m. to five th uh, to 4.30 in the morning, I'm in bed. So I get my seven hours at the very least. An hour before bed, no electronics. I don't care what's happening around the world. I used to have a mentor in my early days as a chairman and CEO of my company in Hong Kong, whose father taught him, unless the house is on fire, my wife is divorcing me, or the bank is pulling the loan, I don't want to hear you while I'm playing tennis. <laughs> and you can use that kind of analogy in your life. What are the things that can disrupt oh. your quiet time? Mm -hmm. I don't want anything to disrupt my last hour of the day. Instead, what I do is I listen to an evening meditation or I listen to empowering messages of whatever sort I feel like is needed at that time. So perhaps this is another tool that I should mention I use quite a bit, which is I've developed a toolkit of things that I can take out of that toolkit throughout the day to use to bring me to that positive side of the issue. So whether it's meditations or power nap or listening to music or listening to, I don't care, Tony Robbins, Fearless Soul, Abraham Hicks, or anything that speaks to you around an issue that you're having so that you can pull that out at that a point in the day and help yourself get over that, that threshold, so to speak. So is it more content driven or is it resonance driven for you? Whatever you're trying to both. Be, it has to be both, right? Because music can get you into an energy space that's really uplifting. Specific messaging around a particular issue can completely shift your energy because it shifts your mindset, because it shifts the conversation you're having with yourself. Mm. So constantly listening to what's happening here, what's what's being messaged here, and figuring out what tool is going to get me into a better energy space is great. The other tool that is very useful is Tony Robbins taught me this, although he doesn't own that, the mood meter. So there are whatever, 32 moods or, or whatever it is that you can have throughout the day. Are you on the mood meter? Are you at the highest exaltation or mm. are you in complete and utter despair? You can't jump 15 moods. Mm. You can only jump about one or two. So this law of attraction becomes very important because the better it gets, the better it gets, the better it gets. So pay attention to the better your life gets, the better your day gets, the, the better it gets, the more right on, on the positive trajectory you are. But the mm -hmm. same thing goes for the other side. The worse it gets, the worse it gets, the worse it gets, the worse it gets. And so paying attention to are you on a down trajectory throughout the day or are you on an up trajectory becomes very important right? because your entire day can be colored by how am I waking up? Did I go to sleep with positive thoughts, with joy, with appreciation, or did I go to bed in a hurried mood? I had no time to myself. I was pissed off because the election pissed me off. I didn't center. And so I woke up with that vibe. Vibration, because vibration stops while you're sleeping, whether you know it or not, that's a fact. Vibration yeah. stops while you're sleeping. And so you wake up with the same vibration that you went to sleep with. Yeah. Catching yourself immediately as soon as you wake up is critical. What's yeah. on my mind, right? How do I get myself out of that to the extent that I went to sleep with the wrong vibration?